The sperm whale is the whale of legend. They dive sometimes to a mile down. They can hold their breath for an hour and a half. One of the most mysterious whales biologically and in human culture, you know, Moby Dick. They're really a very enigmatic species. I've spent a lot of my life studying sperm whales. There's so much we don't know about this animal. And Snotbot is an example of a tool that can radically change this. I'm Dr. Ian Kerr, and I'm the CEO of Ocean Alliance. We study whales so that we can help conserve this blue planet. Really excited to be out here in the Azores. We're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and these islands are just thrusting up from the deep water and ocean currents are coming in and you've got a whole biodiversity of fish, megafauna, whales, and birds. I mean, th this is like a biologist's dream to come here and see all the different interactions that are very rare around the world. This will be the first time we've tried Snotbot with sperm whales, the species that has fascinated me for my life. Generally speaking, whales are a difficult species to study. If you're studying a giraffe on the Serengeti, it doesn't disappear beneath the sands and then appear five miles away. I've spent probably 15 years of my life chasing down whales with a crossbow with quite a big arrow and a, a dart on the end of it. And I would shoot this dart into the back of the whale that would give us a small piece of tissue. From that, we could try to pull apart the life history of the animal, you know, the health of the animal. The only bad thing about that is I don't think I'd like it if my doctor was chasing me down the street just to get a sample and I'd know what they were doing. You know, the whales don't know what's going on. With critically endangered species, we need these totally non-invasive tools. Snotbot came out of desperation. I was working in the Gulf of Mexico after the Deepwater Horizon disaster and we just weren't getting the data. I felt like I was playing the most expensive game of whack-a-mole, trying to get over to this whale and get over to that whale. And I was sitting on the bow of the boat, incredibly frustrated, and I got engulfed in a cloud of sticky, smelly whale snot. And so I just thought, can I fly something into a whale's exhalation and collect data? And the short answer is yes. All right. Snotbot is really just a consumer drone that we stick petri dishes on and we fly into the exhalation of the whale. The real beauty of Snotbot is the, it's totally non-invasive. The animals have no idea we're sampling them. With most whales, we just fly down the body of the whale and the whale exhales and we fly into that arc of the blow. Unfortunately, sperm whales don't blow straight up like a lot of other whales. They blow forward and to the left. So it's just going to be difficult to get the drone in the right place. You've got to be thinking of the wind angle, the waves, the direction the animal is moving in. And you got to get the blow. You know, we need a robust sample. So it's going to be a challenge. OK, let's do it. Right. You guys good? Three, two, one, three, two, one. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I see it, I see it, yeah. Anybody see it? I don't I don't see it. No, okay, I see it. Yeah, I think I see something, Chris. You got it. Oh man, they're going downwind. Alright, I got it. Tell me my height, Chris. Or it's already turning to the right. Lower. Lower, lower, lower. Okay. Oh, that's good, that's good. Come on, baby. Just blow now, blow now, and we're all happy. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, let's bring this in and check the blow. Okay, here we come. Fingers crossed. Be nice to me, Mr. Snotty Whale. Good job, thank you, Chris. All right, it's a good dry blow. Good job, team, thank you. When the drone comes in, that's where my job comes into play. 
I'm Andy Rogan. I'm the science manager at Ocean Alliance. We're looking at genetics of the whale. We're looking at the microbiome community within the respiratory tract of the whale. And then we're also looking at hormones. By studying the genetics of a whale, it's essentially a who's who of the whale. What population is this whale part of? What species or subspecies? And that's critical information for understanding how healthy the broader population is. Are there a lot of animals in this population? Is it related to the animals it's with? the social structure, all of this really important information that wildlife managers use to understand how to most effectively protect these animals. And with the microbiome, monitoring how it changes the differences between this whale's microbiome and another, we can really in almost real time understand the health of that whale. There's some sort of social interaction going on here. I'll see which way it blows so I get some idea. Come on, baby, let's blow. Right there, right there. Come on, baby, one more. Yeah, I think we might have got that. It's not in the can. I think we're on the bleeding edge with this technology. All right, look at that. We're getting better and better drones. We're getting better and better sensors. And the people that are doing the analysis can learn more from these samples. We're really learning so much more about whales and our oceans because of it. I'm pretty excited though. Can I, can I go process this? It's a good, yeah. it's a good team effort, right. a good team effort. Whales are some of the largest, most intelligent animals that have ever lived on this planet. How lucky we are to live with these beautiful, intelligent, enormous animals. How unlucky they are to live at the same time as us. Humans are destroying their environment. In the past, it was through whaling. We decimated whale populations. Now it's through climate change plastic pollution, ship strikes, noise pollution, and there's something very sad about that. If you remove whales from that ecosystem, the whole thing starts to collapse, and that's a really big deal because we need healthy oceans to survive. So many people around the world rely on the oceans for their well-being, for fish, for protein, oxygen. Half of the oxygen in the atmosphere comes from the oceans. So if you remove the whales from the ocean, all of that starts to degrade. This planet just becomes less hospitable for everything, really, including humans. And, and I think that's another reason why it's so important to protect these animals. I've looked in the eye of a whale and I'm convinced there's something going on there. There's something more going on there. And we talk about human intelligence, but I don't think we're a wise species because otherwise we just wouldn't be treating these animals in the way that we do. Watching these animals play, watching them interact with each other is, is truly magical. And I think if anyone saw this up close and personal, it would change your opinion of whales and potentially the wild world forever. Thank <laughs> you.